Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I would like to share 10 ways to customize your freshly acquired Samsung Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus. These are the kind of things I like to do myself to make sure my Galaxy S8 is personalized, and I would like to share them with you as well so you can do the same, discover something new, and also derive maximum satisfaction from your Galaxy S8. So let's dive right in. All right, so the first thing I like to do is to actually enable the face widgets. So basically what the face widgets are, if you go into the lock screen of your phone, you have access to a bunch of face widgets. You have the music controller, uh, you've got the upcoming appointments, and you also have the next alarm. So how do you enable these? So basically what you do is let's go into the phone, let's go into the settings, and then scroll down to lock screen and security, go right inside, and at the bottom here, it's going to say information and face widgets. You tap on this, and then from here, you tap on face widgets, and then you can enable the music controller, today's schedule, or the next alarm on your lock screen. You also have the option to reorder them as you please. So if you tap the reorder button, you can actually take this and put it to the top, or take that and put it to the top. All right, and then you go back, and you're good to go. Now, while we are here, let's go back really quick. And at the bottom here it says contact information. So what you can do is you can use this to add a signature to your lock screen. So in my case, I just tapped it and I put on Saki Tech. So when I do go to my lock screen over here, you'll see that it says Saki Tech at the bottom, but you can put whatever that you please. And here are the face widgets. All right, let's move on to the next customization tip. All right, so as you know, the Samsung Galaxy S8 comes with the edge panels. And uh, there's a couple things I like to customize with the edge panels really quickly to enhance my experience. So let's go into the settings over here and go to display. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to the edge screen. If you click this, it's going to bring a bunch of options. The first thing I like to customize is the edge lightning. So this has changed from the previous versions of the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. It's actually much better now. So if you tap this, what it allows you to do is either when the screen is on or when the screen is off, anytime you get a notification, you're gonna get a lightning around the rims of the device, which looks absolutely beautiful. So as you can see, I said that show the edge lightning, and I set it at always. And then you wanna go in here, and you wanna choose the programs, the apps, that you want to receive the edge lightning notifications for. So let me do a quick demonstration on this one and let me just tap this one more time and as you can see I set it up for messages. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to turn off the display and I'm going to send myself a text message from my other phone and then you can see how the edge actually lights up. Just sent the message over and as you can see around the rim you have this blue light that just uh, traversed all the edges. Let me do that one more time. Let me just send myself one more message. There we go so you can see it one more time looks absolutely gorgeous, all right? These tiny little things are what make the Galaxy S8 so good. So let's go back in here to the settings and go back into the display and the edge screen, okay? So we have the edge lightning all set. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna actually customize the edge panels. So when you move this from the outside, you get access to all these edge panels. You know, you've got the um, Smart Select, you've got the Apps Edge, you've got the Device Maintenance, what you can also do is if you tap this, it's gonna take you into the edge panel management screen. From here, you can disable what you do not need. So let's just disable uh, this as well, disable that. And now, when I go back out, I will only see the things that I wanna see. The weather, uh, the quick tools over here, you have the ruler and all these good things. But that's not everything. If you go back into the edge panels, you can actually do a couple things. Well, first of all, you can turn this off. So that is also something some people don't like, so you can turn that off. But let's keep it on. You can tap this icon here. You can uninstall edge panels, or you can reorder them. So if I tap this, I can actually choose to put the quick tools in the first position, right? So when I go back out here, quick tools actually shows up in the first position. And uh, the other thing finally I can do with the edge panels is I can download more edge panels. If I tap on download, it takes me to the Samsung store. And believe it or not, 
there's a lot of edge panels sitting here for you guys to be able to download, okay? Such as the calculator panel right here. Let me just show you that really quick. So it's been downloaded, let's go back. And then let's go back one more time. And so if you enable this, now when I go back into my edge panels, I actually have a little calculator over here that could come in very handy. 65 plus 50, boom, all right? And that's the edge panels. Let's move on to the next tip. All right, so next up, I wanna talk about the home screen and some of the elements you can actually customize on the home screen. So the first thing is, if you wanna access your apps on the Samsung Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus, you have to pull upwards on the screen and that goes into the uh, app drawer. We don't have a dedicated button that you would find on the older phones, but it actually is available and you can activate it. So all you wanna do is you wanna press and hold on the screen, you want to go into the home screen settings and then go to apps button and simply say show apps button. So when I click apply and I go back out, you now have a dedicated apps button that will take you into your apps drawer. Some people like this, some people don't like this. It's up to you to keep it or not keep it. And the next thing is to actually change the entire home screen layout. So what you want to do is you want to go back into the home screen settings and you want to go into home screen layout um, you have two options. What this allows you to do is you can either have a home screen and an app screen or a home screen only. If I pick the home screen only, the app drawer is going to disappear and all the apps are going to show up on the home screens. So let me show you how that looks like. Click apply. And now as you can see, the app drawer uh, button is gone. And if I swipe over, all the apps are now on the desktop. So this is an option that you do have, okay? So let me go back in, I don't like this too much. Go back in, go to home screen layout. So what I like is I like to have an app screen and a home screen separately. So click apply, and as you can see, it's right back in business. You can access it this way as well. And one more thing I wanna show you guys, as I was uh, browsing through the menu, you might have seen that the navigation bar at the bottom here is a different color. So what you can do is you can actually uh, put any color, pick any color that you want for this navigation pane. So what you wanna do is you wanna go into display, Scroll all the way down, go into navigation bar, and from here you can pick all these different colors that you please. You can even go in here and use the color selector to pick a very unique color that you might like. So let's click done. I like to keep this one over here. Absolutely fantastic. And here's a quick bonus tip. Uh, you can actually change the button layout. So if I tap this over here, I can swap the back key with the recents key. So I can actually uh, tap on this, oops, tap on this over here. And now the recent key is right here and the back key is right there. So it's again, whatever makes you more comfortable is the one you should pick. I like this version better. Let's move on to the next customization tactic. All right, so the next up, I wanna talk about the always on display. So the settings reside under lock screen and security. So if you tap here, you can go into always on display, disable it or enable it, then go inside and you have a bunch of options. Right now, I my option is to show nothing but the home button. That's the home button at the bottom. So when I turn off my phone, the always on display activates the home button that I can see at all times, which is very convenient. But of course, there's more than that. So let's go back in here and you have options like these. So you can actually show the home button and clock or information and then you have access to all these clocks, you know, the digital clock, analog clock, world clock, edge clock, image, and calendar. When you tap on any one of these, you can go in and further customize it. So let's say I pick this one right here. I can change the clock style for the analog clock from here. I can pick a different analog clock, this one, perhaps this one, or this one, right? I can also change the color for the uh, clock background so as you can see right now it is red but I can go for blue uh, purple or whatever color that I desire and uh, the other thing I can do is I can tap on background and I can pick a background to go behind the actual clock so let me just cancel that but just to be just so you're clear uh, when you tap any one of these guys you can go in and further customize that particular clock option so again I can change the clock type to this over here and then I can click apply. And now if I go out to the lock screen, it's gonna activate the always on display, 
But as you can see, not only do I see the clock, I also see the home button because that's what I chose to do. So let me go back in. And here, what I can do also is I can actually hide the home button. So I can just go with clock or information. So now when I tap this and click apply, and when I go back out and shut the phone, this time you're going to see the always on display, but you're not going to see the home button. All right? The home button is still there. You're just not going to see it. All right? So that was the always on display. Just remember, the most important thing is when you go in here and you tap any one of these, you can further customize them um, as you please, which is absolutely fantastic. Very well organized menu. All right, let's move on to the next tip. The next thing I like to do has to do with the phone dialer. A lot of you guys probably use the phone all the time, so why not customize it as much as I can? So let me go back in here, and then as you can see, these are the contacts. Now, if I go into the phone dialer, what I could do is I can press and hold on any one of these numbers except for one because one is reserved for voicemail. If I press and hold on two, it's going to ask me if I want to assign a contact for a speed dial number. So what you do then is you tap assign and you pick somebody that you like. And now number two is assigned to my bro. So if I tap and hold two, it's going to actually call that number. Okay, so you can do this for all uh, these digits. And the other thing over here is if you go into contacts, I just want to let you know that as you can see on the top here, I have favorites. So all you do to pick favorites is go into individual contacts. For example, let's go to bro. Let's go to details and simply tap the star icon. And that makes that contact favorite and it allows it to show on the top above everybody else. Okay, very convenient. And finally, if I go into the settings one more time here, uh, if I go to answering and ending calls, what I could do is I can set uh, the volume key to answer calls and I can also use the power key to end calls. So if I enable these two, let's say somebody gives me a call, I can simply press the volume button and that's going to accept the call. And when I'm done with the call, I can press the power key and that's going to actually end the call. All right, another way to add some customization features to your uh, phone experience. And the final tip I want to give you guys has to do with the enabling a game mode. So what you want to do is if you play games a lot and if you want to get the best possible experience from your gaming, what you want to do is you want to go to the settings, go to device maintenance, and then go into the performance mode. And from here, you've got all these options. So if you want to actually enjoy the uh, gaming to the max, you can choose the game mode. And if you look over here, it says you have enhanced your gaming experience by making games run more smoothly. Okay, now this may reduce your battery life, but we all know that gaming does not in any way extend your battery life. So if you are a gamer, uh, make sure that the gaming mode is enabled before you get into the game. So you don't have to have this activated at all times. You can keep it right over here if you so desire. As you can see, it's turning that off. Uh, but when you're ready to game, just go into the game mode. And of course, you have entertainment mode and the high performance mode. If you have the S8, you can come in and take a look at what these do. All right. And that's the end of this video. And I hope you guys learned some amazing stuff. Now make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech for more videos and give this video a thumbs up to show your love for the Galaxy S8. Also, go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Saki Tech Online. All the social media links are down below in the description box. For now, have a fantastic day and I'll see you on the next video.